Welcome to this episode of Mainline Connect. My name is Jennifer Lynn Robinson, and I'm here today with our guest, Scott Sterling, who's the co-president of Laurel House Board. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for Great being to be here. here. So we like to start off each show talking about a networking topic. And of course, Laurel House is a wonderful organization, but you know, as you know, there's a ton of wonderful organizations even just in our area. So I'm curious to hear about how you guys network to kind of distinguish yourself from other nonprofits that maybe offer the same type of services. Well, we're fortunate in the fact that we have a unique mission. We are, are serve women and children with, through domestic violence programs and services, and we're the only one in our county that does that. Okay. There are other organizations that, that serve women and children in different capacities and maybe offer some DV services. We're, we're the only one dedicated. We have a shelter. We have a 24-hour hotline, and that's all that we do okay. is domestic violence. So that helps us to, to differentiate ourselves from all of the other nonprofits and all of the other social service agencies within the county. Are there any kind of local nonprofits that have similar missions that you tend to partner with, or not so much? We, we, have, we have sister agencies in other counties. Each okay. county in Pennsylvania has one domestic violence agency. Mm -hmm. And we, so we partner with our sister agencies in Bucks, Montgomery, Chester, Delaware, Philadelphia counties. And there's a, a few other organizations that maybe have some DV-like services. They may, might support women in other capacities and handle their DV. Um, situation, but we're the only one that's dedicated in all of our training, all of our staff and our volunteers are solely dedicated to the mission of uh, domestic violence. Okay. So that was going to be my next question about the mission of Laurel House. Um, is it purely domestic violence? Is there more to the mission that you want to tell us about? It is It is working to end domestic violence, mm -hmm. working to break the cycle of domestic violence, working to educate. Uh, we go into schools, we educate junior high school students, High school students, college students, we offer counseling, um, job placement if necessary. We have a, a 30 day shelter. Okay. And um, that's the only domestic violence shelter in the county. There are other shelters, of course, but sure. it's the only DV shelter. Okay. And so the services you offer, you have the education, you have the uh, shelter that you mentioned, and then mm -hmm. you mentioned the hotline for help. The hotline for help. Okay. It's a 24 hour hotline. I'll give you the number because I never remember. I want to get yeah, it right. Get it right. It's 800 642 3150. It's staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have other programs. We have a DART program, a domestic abuse response team, where we have a group of volunteers and staff mm -hmm. that will go out 24 hours a day to meet a victim of domestic violence and provide her the support that she needs, whether it's to come to our shelter, supportive services, and they're contacted by the police or a hospital situation, and they'll come out, you know, 24-7. Wow. So the shelter, you said it's a 30-day shelter, um, and how many people can it accommodate? It can accommodate, it depends on the situation. Yeah. If it's a family situation, we, we don't, we always put the mother with her children. Okay. And if it, so if, if it's single women, we can we can accommodate sometimes 35, 38 people, but it might be as low as 20 people if there's a woman there with, with multiple children. They always stay together in a single room. Right. So it, it depends, but the shelter is full. Um, we provided about 6,000 hours of shelter care last year wow. to about 200 women and children. So if you have a situation where somebody needs that kind of service, but the shelter's full, do you have other resources to help people out, or what do you do? We do. It's an unfortunate situation where the shelter is full I most figured. of the time. Yeah. Um, we have we, we'll, With our sister agencies, maybe we'll be able to place someone in shelter in another county that, that's not full. Okay. Um, we also have a working relationship with other shelters that aren't DV shelters that may have space, and we can provide them with... The, uh, the living situation they need and provide the counseling with them until there's space in our shelter. Or sometimes we just have to provide them with counseling. We don't have space for them. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So now how long have you been on the board of Laurel House? I've been on the board for 14 years. Oh, wow. That's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> and what made you get involved? I decided a, a, a while ago when I, was, when I was working that I needed to uh, be involved in something that gave back to the community. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I knew I wanted to help women. Mm -hmm. and help children. So I went to uh, the nonprofit center at LaSalle. Okay, that's I a great place. took yeah. an onboarding program. It was, a, it was two weekends to be, they taught me about being on a board mm -hmm. and what to look for in board selection. And they matched me with, with, with Laurel House that was looking for male board members. Okay. So I met with the president and, and it worked. It worked then and it works now. 
Yeah, and I'm glad you brought something like that up because I know LaSalle Nonprofit still has a program like that, and I know um, the Arts and Business Council of Philadelphia offers a program like that called something like Business on Board. And mm -hmm. they both offer people to come in who want to sit on boards and get training, and then they try to place them, which I think is nice for people who sure. are looking for Absolutely. those opportunities, um, not only to be placed on boards, but then have that kind of training ground where you're not just stepping into a board, you know, what do I do? <laughs> you have yeah, some background. It, it also provides you with the training and the, and the education to know what to look for from a board. Right. So when you're recruited to ask the right questions, to understand what the board is responsible to give you back as a board member, to make sure you're selecting a board that's legitimate, and one that really you, you mesh with their mission. Because if you don't understand their mission, it's going to be very difficult to sit on their board. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And, you know, I, I also wanted to ask, because I, I know a lot of times with my own clients and just people who are looking for more opportunities, either to give back or to network or both, um, sitting on a board or volunteering for a nonprofit, sure. even not sitting on the board, is always a great opportunity, I think, to network. So I'm curious what your thoughts are after 14 years about how sitting on Laurel House Board has helped your networking efforts for your business. Like I, I've sat on the board for 14 years. Yeah. Board members have come and gone. There's a core group of people that have stayed with us for all those years. There's board members have been on the board longer than I have been on the board. And through the way the bylaws are written, you need to step off after six years and you can come right back on again. So okay. I was off the board once already for a year. Network opportunities, there's, there's people on our board from all walks of life. Yeah. Um, there's many connections you can make through their business relationships, through their personal relationships. It's not solely while on the board. There, there have been people on the Laura House board in the past, as, much, as far as other boards go, that, that look for it as solely a networking opportunity. Right. And that's very easily spotted. Yes. And that's probably not the best way to go about networking on a board is to make it your sole, sole purpose of being on the board. You really have to believe in the mission and really want to help in whatever whatever way you can. I totally agree. And the networking comes naturally and comes secondary. Yeah, I think sometimes you talk to people who say, well, I just think I should sit on a board or this would be good for networking. But I mean, really, it kind of starts, like you were saying, you know, you really have to look at what am I interested in? What kind of causes do I want to help? Like you knew you wanted to help a women's cause. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I mean, I, you know how much I'm into rescue animals, so maybe right. that's something I'd gravitate towards. But, you know, whatever your interests are, I think um, pursue that. Like it's a great networking opportunity. It can be a great business opportunity. Obviously, a, a wonderful chance to give back. But don't just do it for, oh, I should be on a board. You know, look at what you're interested in and then pursue it from there. Because, you know, then also you're going to be either volunteering or sitting on a board with people who share a common interest right. with something that you care about, right? So, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. That, that's what's important. You have to care about the organization, then the people gravitate sort to that way. Yeah. So on the Laurel House Board, I know, you know, some boards have sort of requirements for their board members where either you have to raise a certain amount or give a certain amount as a board member. Does Laurel House do that? Do you have that kind of requirement for fundraising? There is a fundraising requirement. Um, it's not a dollar amount per se okay. or a percentage of your income, which some boards have. You're expected to participate in the event right. at a certain level above a, a regular ticket to maybe the gala. Uh, but you're also responsible to raise a certain amount of money. It's not a dollar amount, but you're expected to raise money. You're expected also to work, with, work on the board. We have a working board. Yeah. Our board is far more active than other boards. We, we plan our events, we host our events. We're responsible for a lot of our events. The staff is always there to support the board and we support, we have a great working relationship with the staff. But it's a board not to sit on and necessarily write a big check, but that will be okay too. Right, that's fine. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't turn that away. <laughs> not turn down, not turn down it down either. So I wanted to shift gears a little because you know, outside of all the work you do with Laurel House, you have your own consulting business called Nineteen Two Consulting, right? That's correct. So first, tell us how that name came about. Well, when I decided for my company uh, last fall, I had to go about selecting a name and. Everything with Sterling seems to be taken. Okay. And I, I didn't want something as plain as Scott Sterling Consulting. So I decided to, to, to look away at a way I can make it more memorable. So I decided to, to look at my initials. And S is the 19th letter, and there are two of them. Oh, okay. And it also provides me the opportunity because everyone asks me what, what the name means. So it's a so conversation I can engage starter. in conversation. It's a simple answer, but... It's not as apparent, so it was, it's an automatic talking point for my company. Okay, I like that, yeah. And so what kinds of consulting do you offer? Uh, financial services, marketing consulting, 
um, is, is the main focus of the company, but we'll look at all other marketing consulting opportunities, social media, branding, mm -hmm. uh, collateral placement, media placement. Okay, so a lot of stuff, yeah. A lot of stuff, a lot of good, <laughs> lot of good stuff. So, you know, I know that you've been in this kind of field for a long time before you started your own yes. business. Um, is it different? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm going to assume the answer is yes, but um, tell me in what ways it's been different to kind of, you know, be a starting out entrepreneur as a startup. Well, I think that it's, it gives me the freedom I need to, to be my own boss. Being your right. own boss is certainly different than working for someone else. Yes. Um, I look at it as someone told me one time is spinning plates and making sure there's always one constantly spinning because there's always <laughs> other ones crashing. Right. But I, I do enjoy the opportunity to work with different clients on different projects, see different points of view, but bring my expertise, bring my background and value to that organization and see them succeed. Yeah. So what's been the biggest challenge so far? The biggest challenge, I, I guess, is... is that's a good question. The biggest challenge is getting my name out, okay. starting the company, mm -hmm. and interviewing and searching clients. I actually had the opportunity uh, last week for the first time to actually turn down business because the client wasn't right. Okay. And that was empowering. That is empowering, and it's also important. You know, it's uh, especially the first time you do that with your own business, yeah. and you realize, oh, I can actually do this. I don't have to take every client that comes in the door, and you shouldn't. You no. know, yeah. Sometimes they're not a good fit. It wasn't yeah. a good fit, I, and yeah. I wouldn't have been a good fit for that person's company, and they would not have been a good fit for my company. So we decided, that I decided it wasn't going to work. Right, right, good, okay. And so what about what's in the works for 19.2 Consulting for this year? What are you looking to do? What are some goals? Goals to expand my company to get, yeah. you know, obtain more clients. Okay. Um, move my reach beyond financial services into to other sectors and highly regulated industries, which are really what I'm, my expertise is in. Okay. So it's the insurance, uh, touch on pharma, but pharma really has its own separate marketing requirements and needs and that's not my specialty but uh, i i was sort of drawn to form my own company after after being laid off um and realizing there's a lot of um consolidation in the banking industry and seeing that there's an opportunity for small banks an opportunity for large banks it's the middle bank that's squeezed out and the first thing they usually squeeze is marketing okay and so is that kind of the niche you're trying to fill that is the niche i fill i, okay. I you know I, I can consult Small to medium-sized financial institutions, insurance companies, investment companies, it all trade in this sort of the same sphere. It's always interesting to me how many times I talk to people and I hear a story similar to that saying, you know, um, we were downsized or I was laid off or I left a job or sometimes it's I went on maternity leave and then decided I didn't, sure. I didn't want to go back and then of that comes this great idea to start your own business. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I thought about it. For a long time, it was it didn't it didn't evolve in my head overnight, right? And I was placed in the situation where I could have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, people came to me first with consulting opportunities. I said maybe I could do this for for a, a company, so I formed a company after getting one of my contracts. Okay, well that was smart. Yeah, <laughs> so you had at least one client. <laughs> at least one client. Right, it's a good start. <laughs> it's a good start. Sure. So going back to your work with Laurel House, um, if people want to get involved, what are some things they can do? They can come to one of our events. We have events throughout the year. You can visit our webpage. It's www.laurel-house.org. Uh, make sure to put the dash in there because there are other Laurel House organizations. Um, learn, learn about the mission of the organization. And there's a way to contact us from the website. Follow us on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Learn about what we do, who we are, and see if how you want to become involved, whether, whether it's a board opportunity, whether it's a, a volunteer opportunity. We also have two thrift shops, one in King of Prussia, one in Lansdale. They're just all run by volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, you can sit on a committee. Um, we have a committee that, that presides over our gala, over our 5K dash. So there's many opportunities to get involved, and you can always donate. I didn't even realize there was a second thrift shop. I've been to your King of Prussia one, which is so nice. I'm sure it your other nice. one's great, too. Yeah. It is nice. It's and they're a, all volunteer-run, you said, right? They're volunteer-run. Yeah. There is a, a, a paid manager. A professional paid manager, mm -hmm. but it's volunteer run and they're open six days a week and extended hours for the holidays. And yeah, it's it's, it's a good opportunity for people that are be, want to be involved in Laurel House that maybe don't know what they want to do. So the thrift shop is great because they talk about the mission. People come right. in and they can get exposed to what we do. We've had we've had referrals to uh, other programs from women that have come into the, into the thrift shop looking for help. 
Okay. And I, I mean, I also think it's fun if you're into fashion, you know, um, you can come into the thrift shop and help people select work outfits or something they yeah, need and, absolutely. you know, um, just kind of marrying different interests that you might have. <laughs> yeah. Our King of Prussia thrift shop is more of an upscale thrift it shop. Is. It is. Yeah. It's, that's where it caters to. That's where our donors come from. Um, so there's generally what I call, they call high fashion at reasonable prices. Yeah. Oh, there's some great stuff there. Um, we actually had a Femme Fashional event there last year. I don't know if you knew that. I so. did know that. Yeah. <laughs> and many people, many uh, women buy an outfit, wear it, cleanse it, donate it back again. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So it, it actually works out. It's kind of kind of a nice way to do that where you actually support the organization and then support the organization again. Right. Right. So now the the national uh, not the national the yearly fundraiser that you have I know it either just happened or it's happening very soon. Yes, it's our it's our annual gala. And when is that? Or the gala is uh, April sixteenth. Okay. Now you know I by the time this airs that will have passed. Right. But you sure. have that every year, so I'd love you to talk about you know what that is a little, how people can get involved. Um, sure. Obviously not for this year, but just for future years. Sure. Yeah. It, it's it's our biggest fundraiser. It's 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 a board run fundraiser with with great help from the staff the staff really does a great job in, in coordinating it. it it's it's generally held on a saturday night um most of the time it's held in montgomery county we try to keep it in the county um it's about 250 people usually some kind of music and some kind of a program and it's it's a great opportunity to to meet the board and get involved in the cause. Yeah, I went last year and it was such a nice event. And I remember and there the was a- festivals were honored. And the festivals were honored, it was wonderful. And um, there was a theme last year, I remember. Um, are you, do you have a theme every year or? We do have, a, yeah. most years we have a theme. This year's okay. theme is Luau, Hawaiian Luau. Hawaiian Luau, do you have your outfit picked out? Um, <laughs> it was a grass skirt, I'm not sure. Really, okay, all right. So it's not <laughs> like a fancy event this no, year. No, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's not generally a fancy event. People, you know, it's certain tie, maybe for the gentleman, but it's not, Overly glamorous, and okay. that, that's that's the that's our clientele, and that's our guests, and that's the way it's it's been for that a number of years. Sense. Yeah, yeah. And then you also have an event. I want to get the name right. Um, walk a mile in her shoes. Tell us about that. That's walk a mile in her shoes is, is a national event. There's there's walk a mile in her shoe, shoes events throughout the area, throughout the country. Our event is May sixth at Hebner Park in Worcester, where you can sponsor a team, start a team, or sponsor my team, or support my team where gentlemen walk in uh, high heel red shoes for literally a mile. It's to uh, draw attention to, to, the, to the women that have to walk in a life of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And it was started as sort of a, a, a lark to get men to participate in a domestic violence event. Okay. Like I said, it's national, but we, we have about 150 or 200 people to participate. It's grown every year. This is our third year doing it. And it's fun to watch um, members of volunteer fire departments, members of police departments, the DA will be out there, all walking in, in high heel shoes, uh, usually about three inches. Right. So, it's, so do you have, now that you've done it, do you have a new appreciation for what us women go through walking in heels? <laughs> you know what, I, I, I was really surprised um, that it's harder to go downhill than uphill. Right. <laughs> I, I never realized that before. Yeah. It's, it's more of a challenge to go downhill and uphill. And walking on grass is, is nearly impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's great. So I've learned. So that's May 6th. And, um, May 6th at Hebrew Park in Worcester. The information's on our website. I was assuming that. Yep. Okay. And also on Facebook. Yeah. And there's a way to sign up to support a team, start your own team, just if you'd like to make a donation or come out and cheer the guys on. Yeah. Sounds like it'll be fun. As we make fools of ourselves <laughs> yeah. in heels for Who a good cause. love that? <laughs> Right. So another thing I wanted to ask about with the nonprofit is um, I know a big deal for most nonprofits these days is kind of how to engage the next generation of people that will be leadership and active in the organization, obviously millennials. Right. So is there anything that you guys do specifically to kind of target getting more millennials engaged in Laurel House? Not not specifically, okay. but it is a need. We, we need to, to increase our, our board demographics in many ways, and one of them is mm -hmm. younger millennial members and um, we do have speaking engagements in colleges and high schools which really starts the conversation okay and we've gotten board members that way from colleges it's really our events they come out maybe maybe they'll come out to our walk a mile maybe they'll come out to our gala or maybe to our 5k run this fall get exposed to, to our mission our cause mm -hmm. or maybe they've been touched by domestic violence and want to okay. get involved so it really 
isn't directed towards millennials, but it is it is a focus. We do we do we would like younger board members to come involved at some level. Yeah, and we didn't talk about the uh, the five k run. So tell us a little bit about that. It's our uh, I believe it's our twenty first annual five okay. k run. It's uh, October twenty third. It's in North Wales. It's 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 a great event. It's uh, about three hundred people come out and for a five k. Okay. They learn about Laurel House and um, are exposed to what it is that we do. There are some people that mar that war run in a team in memory of a, a victim of domestic violence or in honor of a survivor of domestic violence. Okay. And they, they run as a team. There's groups that run, support us. We have sponsors. And generally, it's something that's on a bunch of runners' calendars, which is really important because a lot of people that are runners are looking for a 5K, and it's an opportunity to run a, a beautiful course in North Wales. It's a street course, so you run in some neighborhoods. Okay. And the neighbors, are, and the neighbors in the street are all cheering you on. Right. And you're running for a good cause. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's very helpful. I've done a couple of 5Ks, and, um, you know, when you get to that place, I mean, you know, th some people, they're runners. I'm not a runner. Right. And, you know, so you kind of get to that place, like, what did I get myself into? And then when you see the people on the sidelines who are cheering you on and have the signs about the mission and you re remember why you're doing it, it really Absolutely. helps to get through it. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah that's great. So what about, you know, you personally? What do you, what's maybe on your bucket list, something you want to do um, outside your business, um, maybe a goal for this year? <laughs> well, this year is a, is a big birthday year, so I'd like to celebrate and maybe go on a trip somewhere. Okay. But I really am focused on growing my business and really helping Laurel House to, to move beyond where they are. We had some, uh, you know, some funding um, slow down with the state, with the state contract, with the state budget, and we're trying to... Re some of that money that, that was, we'll get it, but it, it's been slow to come back. Okay. So I, I, I need to f make sure that we, we're, we're in a good footing with Laurel House. I need to grow my business and uh, turn 50. That's a big birthday. Yeah. Are you, it's a big birthday. Are you going to have a party? <laughs> uh, I, I want to go on a trip. I like you want to go I, on a trip? I, I, there's okay. a few places I like to go on, on the bucket list. Okay. Like, like where? To, like to go to Iceland. Okay. Yeah. I like to, like really to go to Cuba, but you can't quite go there for vacation yet. You have to go there. For humanitarian reasons. Okay, so you're definitely going to do the trip, or you think you'll get so involved with growing the business you'll skip the trip? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, you have to get it on the count. That's what I'm trying to get. I at. have to get it on the you calendar. Have to get well, it on the calendar. <laughs> next year is next year is a, is, a, is a bigger anniversary for my wife and I, so we'll probably combine the two of them and do something next year. Okay, what's what anniversary will it be? It'll be a big one. A big one. <laughs> So that's something, you know, we haven't talked about. You know, your wife is a lawyer, right? She's an attorney, yeah. yes. And, um, and so how do you guys kind of juggle it all? You know, I, I know, um, you know, even without kids, um, it's tough for my husband and I. He has a corporate job, and I'm an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and our schedules don't necessarily jive. So, I mean, how do you guys kind of juggle it all? Well, that and a 14-year-old daughter. Yeah, that's what um, I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It's, um, it's respect. She's not only an attorney. She's a great mom, also, and a great wife. She's also mm -hmm. a, a township supervisor in oh, where I we live in White Marsh. Oh, I wasn't aware of Okay. So she's an elected official. So she has those responsibilities also. It's also her second time being a township supervisor. So she has those responsibilities, growing her book of business. Plus, she's involved in, in, in her own set of nonprofit organizations. So we, we balance our time out in the evening and on the weekends and try to balance it out. It's the only way you can do it. Plus, my daughter needs to be driven everywhere. Right. Well, hopefully in a couple of years, that'll not be the case. So that'll make things more simple. Then I'll have <laughs> less hair and more gray of hair than I have left. But maybe more time to travel. <laughs> maybe more, yes, absolutely. So um, so we talked about what's coming up for Laurel House. I know, like I said, by the time we see, viewers see the show, mm -hmm. we'll have passed the gala. But um, the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes is the next big event that's next coming up event. for people to get involved with, right? Yeah. Yes. Plus, there's, there's also a, a number of, of events that we have throughout the year. And the best information is on our website. There's a there's a, a, a film seminar, film series, Luna Fest at the Ambler Theater. There's always a third party that's hosting an event for Laurel House. Some of them are on our website. Okay. Some of them are not. You might get an email or you might see on Facebook that we've shared something with uh, for a third party. So there's a, a bunch of different ways we have tabling events at the holidays at the mall. You'll see Laurel House out there at, at community events at Township Days at You'll see a Laurel House table out there with information. We'll come to, we go to schools throughout the county. Right. So there's a bunch of different ways that we're visible and, and to get involved and find out about more about Laurel House. So, you know, you've mentioned a couple of kind of the signature events and then all of these smaller events that go on. As co-president, 
do you are you at all of these events? I mean, do you try to be at all these events? Well, it's one of the reasons why there is a co-president. I'm okay. fortunate enough to have a, a, a second part of me. Uh, it, it's it's a, it's a large responsibility for especially someone that works full time. Um, the presidents try to be out at most of the events, mm -hmm. um, but we have a strong board and we'll have, we'll have board participation at all of the events. So if if my co-president Didi or I can't be there, we'll have one of our vice presidents or someone else from the executive team of the board out there. Okay. The staff is often out. The staff is uh, is out many nights a week. Our executive director, I think she was last home in 1975. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, it sounds like a lot that goes on, Yeah, which is great. So what about, you know, I know we were talking a little bit before the interview on just the new business and getting the word sure. out. Um, so, you know, whether it's for Laurel House or your consulting business, what's been some networking organization or events that have worked for you that you think maybe would be helpful to some of our viewers? Sure. I, I attend some chamber events um, for my business. It, it's a great opportunity to meet local business people. Um, and there's many chambers of commerce. There's also a, a bunch of networking organizations that I've gone to their events. To be honest, I'm relatively new at networking for my company. Right. I've networked for the businesses I've worked for before, networked for Laurel House for a long time. But building my own business, you know, I'm looking for different networking opportunities. Ones that provide me the opportunity for my business, not necessarily for someone else's business. Yeah. So I, I generally try to be real, really selective in what I pick to give me the best opportunity for my for my time. Okay, yeah, and that makes sense. And it's it's probably hard to wear the two hats too, like to go to events and say, you know, am I pitching Laurel House or am I trying to gain business or both? Um, I'm always pitching Laurel House. You're always pitching Laurel House. Laurel House, House is, is a great <laughs> way to engage in conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a topic that everyone knows about, but many are often, many are, are often don't want to discuss. Right. Um, many women that I meet, and men that I meet, of course, um, have a domestic violence connection. So that, that's really a door opener. And it's, it's great. If the conversation is only about Laura House, I'm happy. But if it leads me to talk about my business, what I do in the other part of my life, yeah. that's fine. But, you know, it's, it's always talking about Laura House. Yeah. Yeah. You're really about Laura House, which is wonderful. It's a great organization, great mission. Um, so I guess the last thing is, you know, I know you mentioned a few things during the interview, but um, definitely let our viewers know how people can reach you if they're interested in your consulting services, and then also just where to find information about Laurel House. Um, I know you mentioned the website, maybe you want to mention it again, and you know different social media, how people can follow and learn more about Laurel House. Sure, to find out yeah. about me, Scott Sterling, <laughs> and my company, it's sterling at 192llc.com. It's all spelled out, N-I-N-E-T-E-N-T-W-O-L-L-C.com. Um, Laurel House is laurel-house.org. Um, Laura House available on Facebook and Twitter for your viewing pleasure. The, the, the staff is great about tweeting out about our events, about board members, mm -hmm. about where we are in the community. Same thing with Facebook. I don't know how often they update it, but it seems to be something new very regularly. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. Yeah, and thank you guys for watching this episode. And be sure to check out Walk a Mile in Her Shoes on May 6th, right? Great. Yes, great. absolutely. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you.